Hey everybody, welcome back to another grilling kinda video. If you have a Pit Boss Pro Series grill, every once in a while you're gonna run into this situation where you turn it off and you begin to see some smoke coming out of your uh, pellet hopper. We've had it a couple of different times. At first I just thought, well, it's just some uh, smoldering stuff in the fire pot and the wind's blowing it in the right direction. It's blowing the smoke back into the hopper. Twice now, in the two years we've owned it, we've actually had it get hot. In other words, it, uh, in its cool down period, it continued to burn and the fire burned into the auger a little bit. What ends up happening when that occurs is the area closer to the firebox gets very hot. So I'm gonna show you how to disassemble this and a modification you can make, and I wouldn't do it until you have to, but a modification you can make that I think makes a ton of sense. So let me first show you how to disassemble the unit. If you lay down underneath the control side where the hopper is, right, that's got the hopper and the control box below it, there's a metal grate. You can sort of remove that, uh, there's six or eight screws. You take that down, pretty easy. You then wanna unplug each of the electrical connections in there. There's several little, um, uh, keyed plugs. You'll have one for the motor, one for the fan, one for the heating element, and a very small one for the actual um, temperature control inside the thermostat. You want to unplug each of those and then it's best to take like an upside down five gallon bucket or a little table or a chair and set it right near the firebox because there's four screws that hold the firebox to the unit. Here. We're just going to go ahead and lay this right down. I want to be very careful we don't tear up any of the the plugs here. I left one connected, but it looks like it's holding by the ground strip. So this is going to be good enough. Once you do, you're going to find that on the outside of the actual auger, so there's going to be a, a, the, the hoppers here. This sits right on, to, on below the hopper where the wood is. Um, this is connected to the auger. It goes through a long tube and it feeds the pellets from the hopper into the actual firebox. Um, and actually this sits this way. What's really interesting is <laughs> I'm happy with my pit boss, but this is kind of a funny little design thing here. This motor is held in place and keeps from um, moving through a small piece of plastic. And that plastic, if it gets hot, begins to melt. And the first time it did it, I just took a file and I filed it smooth and this thing sat right up against it and it sort of held it in place again. As you, as you know what happens, the, uh, the auger turns for a little bit and then it stops and it turns for a little bit. So what it does, this has some torque put on it. Uh, it sits flat against a metal bracket, but what keeps it from wobbling around is this glob of plastic, epoxy, PVC, whatever it is. Well, in our case, this time, that got hot enough that it, it lowered a little bit, and this motor was able to actually rotate in place. Not a great scenario. So, a couple of things to note. To get the auger out, there is a small screw and nut right here, and that's what prevents the auger from coming out too far. It stops it. The motor is held onto the shaft with a small pin. I've already pulled the nut off the other end, and the motor then can slide off of here. Okay, we'll set the motor aside. All right, so as we remove this motor, you can see nothing's actually holding the motor in place other than this plastic sort of stuff here. And when we had these problems where it wasn't a proper shutdown, which by the way, was my fault. It's probably because I didn't keep it real clean in the fire pot, but this piece right here has just begun to melt away a little bit. You can kind of see you know, just how it, it looks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up with something a little bit better than this piece just kind of wedged in there to hold that motor from flopping around, okay? I want you to notice something too when you look at this. The motor, when it's in the shaft, does have a little bit of play and that, that's good. We want a little bit there. We just don't want it to be able to do this, which when I opened mine up, my cord was wrapped around that a couple times. So that's exactly what had happened. I'm gonna show you what you need to do to remedy this. And it's fairly easy. A couple of simple things at Home Depot cost me under $15. This is what I used. I got two packages of these um, quarter by 22 inch long stainless steel uh, machine screws. I went ahead and bought eight nuts, two packages of the quarter by 20 stainless nuts. Actually, I only used four of them. I bought one package of quarter by 20 uh, couplings. Uh, there were three in a package, I used two of them. And the last thing is some kind of little piece of metal that we're gonna, basically, we're gonna have two screws going up and a piece of metal over the top. So it's gonna be held in like this. And then I did go ahead and buy these inside corner braces. Uh, 
there's four in a pack. I only used one. Quite frankly, I bought them because the distance in these two holes was the distance I needed for the motor to fit between them. I just wanted something that made it easier. Um, altogether, this was like, I don't know, just under 13 bucks with tax. But I'll show you how we go about doing all of this and putting it together. To decide where we're gonna locate our pieces here, let me get this upright. By the way, the way it's upright is the fan goes down below and it kind of is on the low side over here. That's the way you know you're doing it right, not on the side or this way, okay? And the wires should sort of be going toward the back where they go through the opening there. So I'm gonna just put this in place and I'm gonna stick this pin here just to hold it, the motor in here. I'm not even gonna put a nut or washer on it. I'm just trying to get it to hold right there. It gives me an idea on the position on where I want this thing. And as I mentioned before, you can see that screw right there it keeps that auger from going backwards. So I don't want it to go back any further than that. Probably want to keep it right about here. Now my intended design here is going to be to drill a hole right next to the motor on this side and on this side. And I'm going to run these two inch long nuts through it or screws, bolts through it. I'm going to put a coupler bolt on it. And then I'm going to have a bracket that goes down over the top and another screw will go in here holding this thing completely tight. Right about here is where I'm going to want this to go. So I'm going to drill my hole right next to this. And I'm starting with a very small pilot hole just to mark the spot here. The same on the other side. Now I can move the motor and actually drill these holes where I need them. I started with very small pilot holes because it'll make it a little easier when I'm going to the quarter inch size and it'll keep the bit from wobbling around as much. So, over here. Yeah, right here. Hey, do me a favor. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like it, subscribe to the channel and click on that little bell notification so you get notified of new videos. Thanks. So with the holes drilled, I'm just putting these uh, screws through here. Now, in this case, over here, I have this one all the way up because I want these um, couplers at different heights. So I have this one all the way up. I have this one with a nut below it and on top of it sandwiched between it. So you can see that there's only about an inch sticking up here and about an inch and a half here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our motor, we're going to slide it right in place where it goes. And I'm just going to put this pin in here just to hold it in place for a moment. All right, so with that there, I've taken my small bracket that I bought and I drilled out two of the holes a little bit bigger so they'll fit my quarter inch bolts here. Let me put this coupler on. We're gonna put this here. I'm gonna put the lip on the back side. That's gonna keep it from moving that direction. And we'll get this hand started here. Good. Now we're gonna do the same on the other side. Now I'm gonna have to push this here because I have a little bit torque so I'm going to use, um, oh by the way you see I put a nut here because I know I made this one higher, there's going to have to be room above this. Now before you do this, why don't you make sure that your whole piece will fit back on. I already have these nuts will fit behind the hopper and it will be just fine to go in there. So I'm going to take this by hand and now it's just a matter of tightening everything down. Alright, that is good and secure now. So I'm going to connect everything up without putting the cover back on just so we can see and test everything. By the way, there is a rubber grommet here. You definitely want to make sure you have that back in place. Um, the last thing you want to do is have that shorting out against the metal as it rubs around in there. there we go. All right, in order to test all this before I put it together, I am going to connect all these connections. Not easy to do here with the tripod not blocking the view. The two white leads that come off of the fire, uh, off the auger box go to the purple and white. Those are for the heating element. The yellow and white right here are for the fan. And that's the blower fan that's, that blows air into it, not the fan on the back side of this motor just designed to cool it. And then the red and white goes to this particular fan. All right, before I plug it in, I want to make sure everything looks good here. Everything's connected. Nothing's in the way of any moving parts. None of it appears to be, so I believe we're all good there. And I'm gonna hit the, I can see my auger turn and that's exactly what I wanna see. That's gonna start driving my pellets down in there.
I'm going to unplug it right there because now that this is rotated around, I can get this screw on here for my auger shaft pin. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this up. You're going to see a bunch of crumbs fall out of here because as I was doing this, pellets were falling there. So we'll sweep that up in a minute. But I've got it unplugged again and we're going to lift it up over those screws we just put in place and right down in, in place here. And then we'll put at least one screw started here. The one on the back side started. With those started now, we can go ahead and get the rest of these in. All right, so our firebox is good and attached again. Now it's just a matter of putting your grate back up here. Oh, by the way, the first time you do this, these wires are all tie wrapped underneath here. I actually don't bother with it. Just make sure that they're not in any jeopardy or risk of going up into either of the fans. And in this case, they are not, so I'm okay with the way it's sitting here. I like to get two screws just hand tightened in here so I don't have to hold this thing in place. All right, with everything put back together, it's time to just go ahead and pour our pellets in. I went ahead and pulled these out of the little uh, hopper in the back before I took this all apart just so that it wouldn't spill all over the place. Let me go ahead and power it on. We're on our smoke setting. We're just gonna let this go for a few minutes before I put the grate back in and everything else so I can see the fire pot. So let's talk about what actually caused this. Frankly, I did. I truly believe what's happened here is I wasn't cleaning this as frequently as I needed to. And that fire pot had ashes in it that were about halfway up the, the side of the heating element. My guess is because of, because of that, because of all that residue in there, when it goes into its shutdown mode, the whole purpose of it running for a while after shutdown is so that it will burn out any of the pellets that are still in there uh, and the, the ones that are in the fire pot. So the auger stops running, the fan continues to run, it blows air into it, forcing it until the, the fire sort of burns out. Because I had so many ashes in there, I believe that the pellets were stacked higher and all the way up toward the auger tube. And I think that's what happened. As they were burning, they were starting to catch fire a little bit with the pellets that were inside the auger. And, you know, not that there was a blazing fire in there, but there was probably a smoldering fire that kind of carried itself down the auger a little bit, not all the way in. Um, it looked like when I took the pellets out, about four inches or so into the pipe had charred pellets. In doing so, I heated up that entire tube, the auger itself, and the aluminum around it, which ended up causing this little plastic bracket here that hold that motor in place to sort of warp and lose some of its height. So, why did it happen? Not properly maintaining it. Truly believe that. Well, the good news is we've got some smoldering going on right here and I can see a few embers in there. There's, um, there's a little sort of hill of pellets that are going from the tube down over the heating element. Now those embers are still coming out. I can hear the auger starting to run and I'm just beginning to get fire. And with that forced air going in there, I can see the fire starting to swirl around in that a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put my grate back on here, my drip guard, before this gets too, um, too hot to be able to do. So let me do that real quick. All right, I've got that in place. I'll put in my rod here that allows me to open up the fire grate. All right, I've got my grates back in here. I'm going to let it run for about three or four more minutes and I'm going to cr crank it up to about 350 and we'll make sure this is all set to go. But this is a great little modification or repair you can do to your pit boss. And again, I don't know if pit boss sells those parts, but it worries me to think about how many people might throw one of these away or get rid of it or think it's kind of a piece of junk. Um, I've had mine two years. I love this thing. It's had a couple of minor issues. Like I said, I think I caused them, including this one. But the great news is for $13 as of the recording of this in December of 2021. That's all it took to fix. So very good. That means next week when my son's here for the Christmas holidays, we'll be able to get some things smoked. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video or found it useful. If you did, do me a favor, go ahead and give it a like, share it with other people on your pit boss forums where they might've run into the same thing. Thanks everybody. Safe and happy smoking and grilling.